Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.5, the effects of exercise on the body systems. As always, we'll be following the OCR syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam. For topic 1.5, you need to know about the short-term effects of exercise on the muscular, respiratory and cardiovascular systems and the long-term effects of training. Before we begin, I'd really appreciate it if you'd take a moment to click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be notified when the next topic is uploaded. We'll begin with the immediate effects of exercise on the muscular system, which include a rise in muscle temperature and metabolism due to an increase in the amount of energy used by the muscles. Lactic acid is released in response to high intensity or anaerobic exercise. This causes discomfort and muscle fatigue, leading to a reduction in intensity or the need to stop and rest. Only when resting can sufficient oxygen be delivered to break down the lactic acid and for the muscles to regain their function. Lactic acid is broken down in the presence of oxygen into carbon dioxide and water. The cardiovascular system adapts in many ways to the immediate demands of exercise. Just before exercise, heart rate starts to rise as adrenaline is released, leading to an anticipatory rise, which ensures enough oxygen is delivered to the muscles and waste products, including carbon dioxide, are removed. During exercise, heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output all increase significantly as the demand for oxygen in the muscles goes up. In addition, something called the vascular shunt mechanism redistributes blood from areas like the digested system to the muscles, further increasing oxygen supply. The arterioles, or small arteries which supply the muscles, experience vasodilation, where their diameter increases, accelerating the flow of blood to these areas. At the same time, arterioles distributing blood to low priority areas, for example the liver, experience vasoconstriction, where their diameter decreases and blood flow is reduced. The entrances to the capillaries, called precapillary sphincters, also vasodilate and vasoconstrict, diverting even more blood to the muscles. The respiratory system also adapts during exercise to fulfill the greater demand for oxygen. Breathing rate, tidal volume and minute ventilation all increase, meaning more oxygen is being drawn into the lungs. This accelerates the process of gaseous exchange in the alveoli, or in other words, allows more oxygen to diffuse into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide to diffuse from it. The final thing for this section is to apply the short-term effects of exercise to examples from physical activities. So here are a few examples. When sparring, a boxer's stroke volume will increase to meet the higher demand for oxygen in their muscles. A cricket player's heart rate will increase as they chase a ball in the outfield. A footballer sprinting with the ball will accumulate lactic acid in their muscles. A swimmer will experience a rise in muscle temperature as they begin to exercise. And an 800 meter runner will experience a vascular shunt where blood is redistributed from certain organs to the working muscles. Okay, so that's everything you need to know on the short-term effects of exercise. So we'll move on now to the second and final section on topic 1.5, the long-term effects of exercise or the effects of training. We'll begin as before with the muscular system. So in response to weight or resistance training, athletes experience an increase in muscular strength and power. This is partly due to muscular hypertrophy, which is a term used to describe an increase in the size or mass of a muscle. The tendons, which join muscle to bone, also become stronger in response to resistance training. Flexibility training increases the elasticity of the muscles, which improves the range of movement possible at joints. Endurance training improves muscular endurance, which is the ability of the muscles to contract repeatedly without tiring. This is partly due to hypertrophy of the slow twitch muscle fibers, as larger slow twitch fibers are capable of producing more energy through aerobic respiration. High intensity anaerobic training leads to an increase in the size of fast twitch muscle fibers and therefore improvements in power and speed. Anaerobic training also improves the efficiency with which lactic acid is removed from the muscles, delaying the onset of fatigue. The cardiovascular system adapts in many ways in response to training, including an increase in the size of the ventricles and strength of the cardiac muscle, particularly the walls of the left ventricle. This means that a trained heart can hold more blood and contract more forcefully, leading to increases in stroke volume and cardiac output. 
Training speeds up recovery, or the rate at which heart rate returns to resting levels after exercise, and causes resting heart rate to fall. This is due to the increase in stroke volume, which means the heart doesn't need to beat as often to deliver the required volume of blood. A resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute is known as bradycardia, a common phenomenon in highly trained athletes. The vascular shunt mechanism may also improve, as the blood vessels become more efficient at vasodilating and vasoconstricting. In addition, red blood cell and therefore haemoglobin concentration goes up, improving the oxygen-carrying capacity of the blood. Capillarization of the muscles, which means the development of new capillaries, may take place as well, meaning more blood and oxygen can be transported to the cells. Finally, there may be a decrease in blood viscosity or thickness, which speeds up blood flow and therefore oxygen delivery to the muscles. Next, the long-term effects of exercise on the respiratory system. So training increases capillary density surrounding the alveoli and the surface area of the alveoli themselves. As a result, gaseous exchange in the lungs becomes more efficient, meaning more oxygen can be taken up by the blood and carbon dioxide removed from it. There's also likely to be a small increase in tidal volume, as the respiratory muscles, so the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, become stronger. This allows more oxygen to enter the lungs with each breath. These adaptations result in more oxygen reaching the muscle cells, allowing athletes to work at higher intensities and for longer periods of time. Okay, so that's everything in terms of the effects of training on the muscular, cardiovascular, and respiratory systems. But before we finish, there's one more adaptation that relates to the skeletal system, and that's an increase in bone density. Load-bearing activities like running or weight training put stress on the bones, which adapt to become more dense and resistant to injury. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.5, the effects of exercise on the body systems. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 2.1 on the components of fitness.